How can we be certain that the historical accounts are accurate representations of world history? Unearthing the truth from ancient records and documents can be tricky, often yielding conflicting narratives and opposing theories. Thankfully, in the 20th century, scientific progress offered us a seemingly foolproof method to precisely date certain archaeological artifacts and place them within a historical timeline. Radiocarbon dating The premise is elegantly simple. While an organism is alive, it maintains an equilibrium between the C14 it absorbs and the C14 undergoing radioactive decay. When the organism dies, it ceases to take in carbon dioxide, while the C14 in its tissues continues to decay at a known rate, with a half-life of approximately 5,730 years. Although this method is primarily optimized for dating organisms up to 50,000 years old, it is widely used to determine the ages of artifacts much closer to our historical timeline, say, within the last two to 3,000 years. Here's where the complications arise. As we'll illustrate, carbon dating routinely provides dates with a margin of error ranging from 1 to 2,000 years, making specimens appear far older or even dating them to the distant future. The issues with this dating method became apparent from its very inception. In 1946, Willard Frank Libby, credited with its creation, published results that revolutionized the dating of ancient artifacts, earning him the Nobel Prize. However, Libby was not a historian and placed unwavering trust in the widely accepted chronology crafted in the Middle Ages, despite this narrative being highly disputed throughout history. For more on that please refer to other videos made by History Hacked. One of his initial tests analyzed the Egyptian collection of J.H. Breasted, believed to date back to the 5th dynasty, around 2500 BC, and yielded carbon dates in the 1500 to 1600s AD. Libby, firmly convinced of his method's precision, declared these disputed objects as forgeries. However, from its inception, this method had its share of critics. Respected archaeologist Vladimir Miloicic pointed out a series of errors associated with the technique. For instance, a live North African wildflower displayed a radioactivity index that would erroneously imply it had been dead for several hundred years. Whereas an Australian eucalyptus appeared to have an index suggesting it wouldn't exist for another 600 years. These errors did not go unnoticed by other scientists and researchers employing this technique. In issue number. 225 of Nature magazine, dated the 7th of March 1970, the results of analyzing the C14 content of mortar from an English castle, known to have been built 738 years ago, produced a radiocarbon date of 7,370 years. An error of 6,500 years. The Antarctic Journal of the United States, published in 1971, reported radiocarbon analysis of freshly shot seals that inaccurately indicated an age of 1300 years. Even seals mummified just 30 years prior were dated as 4,600 years old, with an astonishing error of 4,570 years. In 1984, the Technology and Science magazine published results from two symposiums in Edinburgh and Stockholm. In Stockholm, scientists highlighted that the radiocarbon method seemed to produce significant distortions when applied to ancient Egyptian history, particularly events preceding our time by 4,000 years. In 1989, the British Science and Technology Council analyzed the precision of the radiocarbon method in the eighth issue of New Scientist magazine. 38 laboratories worldwide participated in the research. They received specimens of wood, turf, and carbonate salts with known ages only to the organizers, not to the analysts. Shockingly, only seven of the 38 laboratories reported somewhat accurate results. The rest were significantly off, by factors of two or three times or even more. Why might radiocarbon dating be inaccurate for objects believed to have originated within 2,000 to 3,000 years of the accepted historical timeline? One issue concerns cosmic factors such as solar activity, cosmic rays, and even human activities like industrial emissions and nuclear bomb testing. These factors have altered atmospheric C14 levels over time. While scientists have introduced corrections to account for these changes, volcanic emissions throughout history and prehistory can have similar effects, and it remains uncertain how these are factored in. Furthermore, there's the unsettling prospect of human error or, in the worst case, fraud. Many radiocarbon dating labs typically only accept samples with age estimates suggested by historians or archaeologists. 
Aforementioned, archaeologist Vladimir Miloicic proposed halting the critical editing of radiocarbon datings, urging both physicists and archaeologists to publish all research results without filtering out seemingly improbable dates. He also pushed for archaeologists not to inform physicists of the estimated age of a finding until after they've completed their analysis, ensuring truly objective results. Although these practices may have evolved over time, many recent carbon dates tend to align with the perceived age of an object estimated by archaeologists. Given that these samples are rarely tested independently and assigned assumed dates, there remains reason to remain skeptical about such claims. In conclusion, the errors inherent in radiocarbon dating are significant. They can lead to discrepancies of thousands of years, rendering the method unreliable when dating artifacts within our relatively short historical timeline. If you're intrigued by the notion that our historical timeline may be inaccurate, pay a visit to historyhack.com, where we offer hours of captivating video and audio content. And for those fascinated by alternative history and the realm of Tartaria, don't forget to check out the shop Tartaria store, where you'll discover a selection of unique Tartarian clothing and accessories, all handcrafted by the magical forest elves deep in the heart of Tartary. Swing by historyhack.com slash shop. Make sure to like and subscribe to History Hacked and follow us at History underscore Hacked. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode.